So our, we're talking to Archbishop Timothy Berlioz. Uh, Archbishop, you, your men are in a particular, and women are in a particular situation here where um, they are working with the government so closely vis-a-vis -vis the military. And yet, they're in a position where so many of their teachings and personal beliefs are coming into conflict now with government policy. How are you, what are you advising them? How are you dealing with this now? Well, obviously, we always advise them to, uh, that they have to obey what are, what are just orders, mm -hmm. but no one can order you uh, to act against your conscience. And that's so fundamental in the military that even if your conscience is objector, right. you can be dispensed from, mm -hmm. uh, from your commitment. And generally, the person you would go to for that kind of a dispensation is the chaplain. Mm -hmm. Because the chaplain is the one person on a military installation who, who you can see and he does not have to report to the commanding officer that he has seen you. Mm -hmm. There's no one else on an installation that has that freedom. I want to talk about the don't ask, don't tell policy, which was lifted by the administration, by Congress, uh, uh, last year. And when that was lifted, it really put so many chaplains, especially Catholic chaplains, in an awkward situation because suddenly you had the government saying uh, homosexual activity is accepted, we, we're, we're going to embrace it and accept uh, homosexuals as, it, just like anybody else. Okay, fine. Now in your chapels, in the services that are conducted by your chaplains, the, the Catholic Church has always taught that homosexuality is a sin. Here again, are we seeing a situation where the teaching and the beliefs are running up against government policy? And might it put you, and is it putting your chaplains in a situation where they could be acting illegally by acting on their faith? I certainly hope not. Uh, one of my concerns, however, is that obviously what a chaplain says, what a priest says in the context of a liturgical service, um, he is protected, at least uh, heretofore he is, was protected by the, by the Constitution. The, the issue is what happens in a situation where um, he is not in a strictly religious setting. Mm -hmm. For instance, someone comes to him for counseling right. and says, I have a problem with my relationship. Should the priest respond and say, well, there's a fundamental problem with the kind of relationship you have, mm -hmm. he could easily be subject to Some sort of discriminatory action there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Or charged with such. Uh, I, we should also talk about, I've been getting emails throughout the day, well, as I announced on Facebook that you'd be on the program. And uh, there have been a number of emails from military personnel saying they have been subject in recent days to sensitivity training about just this issue. Are your chaplains being subjected to um, sensitivity training about homosexuality and how to deal? I mean, homosexuals are people too. I don't know oh, why well, there, there needs to be a sense, special sensitivity training. But Exactly. As part of this whole uh, lifting of uh, the so-called don't ask, don't tell provision, uh, all military personnel have been subject to, to training, and it's been done on, on different levels, starting mm -hmm. at the top and working its way down. Um, and so, yes, the chaplains have had to, uh, have had to submit to, uh, to, this, to this training. And what is the training like? Um, it's fundamentally response to given situations and how you would react mm -hmm. in those situations, uh, what is per acceptable and what is not acceptable. Obviously, um, many, many things are already covered by the, the military code of, sure. of justice, but um, now that's applied to these specific situations. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to go to the... Now, the Defense Department authorized same-sex marriages in chapels and authorized chaplains to carry out those marriages in states where they're legal. There again, isn't the church in a very awkward spot? And you, what is your position? Well, now, obviously, obviously, you can't... Obviously, our position is that uh, no Catholic priest will will perform or bless any sort of union of that of that nature. Mm -hmm. the, there's a more fundamental difficulty, though, to this provision because um, there is a federal law called the Defense of Marriage Act, mm -hmm. uh, which defines marriage as between a man and a woman. So it's difficult to understand how, on a federal installation something which is against federal law mm. is uh, in some way permitted, blessed. 
Um, it's it's very much like uh, they don't take the, the 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 military does not take the same position, for instance, in a state where marijuana is admitted for medical purposes. Try to bring that on an installation and see what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, they won't look the other way. Uh huh. Interesting. Interesting. Are we reaching a point when you when you take all of these instances as one? Are the chaplains moving into the same space that Catholic hospitals, Catholic orphanages, Catholic social service outreach has been dealing with over the last decade? And frankly, we have to say, they've lost. A lot of Catholic orphanages are out of business now, a lot of Catholic hospitals, because they were unwilling to put their beliefs aside, their teachings and conscience aside, and continue the good work that they've been doing for decades. Is that where the chaplaincy is? I think? certainly hope not. I certainly hope not. Um, and I think that we will be able to successfully defend the chaplains, uh, mm -hmm. certainly in a court of law. I think the yeah, exactly. My question is, does this mandate also violate the separation between church and state? And uh, can uh, that uh, be uh, Archbishop, you want to deal with that? Um, it, it, it does in the, in the sense that um, the state is in the process of, of telling us that we have to fund something that we consider immoral. Yeah. And so in that sense, it does violate the yeah. separation between church and state. Yeah, it, it fundamentally does it. You know, people often, when they hear the separation of church and state, they think it's to keep the church out of the state. No, no, it's the other way it's around. It's the other way it's around. the state out of the church. And uh, no, it absolutely does. I, I want to ask you about a story we're seeing in the headlines today. There was a burning of a couple of Korans oh, yes. in, in Afghanistan. Now, this was an accident, we have to say right up front, it was, they were accidentally placed in one area and they were uh, incinerated. But inside of them, they had very hostile, horrible, anti-Semitic scrawlings and things inside of them. Nonetheless, they were accidentally burned. We have since had the president, the secretary of state, the head of the CIA, uh, the NATO commander apologizing to not only the folks in Afghanistan, but also Muslims worldwide. Is there a sensitivity here for religious sensibilities that perhaps don't extend to the situations we've been talking about? It would certainly seem that that is the case. Um, it's almost as if um, it's because Christianity in this country is majority, then we don't have to... Uh, we don't have to worry about offending their sensibilities, and yet, by the same token, um, one wonders if the same uh, sensibilities existed with, with other faith groups, which are minorities, sure. if, there, if there would not uh, be more sensitivity to, mm -hmm. to those groups. No, it, no it's really, it's, uh, when I saw that story, I thought, Wow, we're bending. We, we, there's a repeated apologies. Uh, Bishop, uh, Archbishop, now Cardinal Dolan can't even get a little exemption from one regulation, and we don't know what's coming down the pike. There are dozens of other regulations that have yet to be written, so we don't know how deeply and it, uh, uh, this, these regulations will go in profoundly changing not only the way people deal with their health care every day, but our our, our conscience uh, and and those of our family members.